for an in-depth look on how the dispute between China and Vietnam is affecting investment in Southeast Asia. I spoke with Mark Mealy, Vice President of Policy at the U.S. ASEAN Business Council. Well, the latest is right now, because of the recent, uh, I guess, the, the deployment of an uh, oil rig uh, in areas offshore of Vietnam that are somewhat disputed, the resulting backlash amongst people in Vietnam, I think, is causing a bit of a, of a new kind of concern that perhaps if the government of Vietnam uh, is, uh, finds it difficult to maintain degrees of stability and, and peaceful kind of coexistence, then perhaps uh, that could be something which businesses and investors may want to factor into as they look at Vietnam as a place to do business. Uh, Vietnam's a great place to do business. Young population, rapid economic growth, and of course being part of the ASEAN region, by being in Vietnam you're able to tap into lots of opportunities in the neighborhood. I think it's the kind of thing where as companies look at the leadership of the country and really value the kind of stability that Vietnam has always represented, this does perhaps make someone just have that question kind of going forward. So a lot will be seen how well the government of Vietnam really moves forward and makes sure this kind of thing doesn't happen again. And of course, there's the competitiveness issue, right? Sure. A lot of people have talked about the U.S. investing in China for the factories there. But mm -hmm. lately, with inflation there, mm -hmm. other parts of Asia, specifically in Vietnam, sure. have becoming more and more attractive. How competitive now is for a U.S. company who's looking at putting up a factory in China mm -hmm versus Vietnam, how close are they? I think they're very close, and depending upon the sector you're talking about, um, because of the cost differential really getting smaller and smaller, lots of economies in Southeast Asia are actually being able to attract those investments which might normally have gone to China, are now going to Vietnam at a certain level, and maybe if we're talking about very sort of low skill types of manufacturing, maybe even a Cambodia has been able to attract those investments which normally used to go to China, but no longer. I mean, this is one of the fastest growing regions in the world in Correct. terms of investment. Let's start, let's go with Thailand right now. Mm -hmm. They have a, a very significant situation there. Uh, Ying Luck Shinawat is now out of office Correct. because of the protests and because of some of the litigation issues. Mm -hmm. So they're really, really without a, a leader at this point. Now, this isn't the first time. True. And it probably won't be the last time. But for investors, can't this be a very scary moment? I think it can be. Long-term investors in Thailand, again, have, have, a, have a knowledge of this kind of history in the country. They won't be the ones that will all of a sudden decide to leave. I think the impact is in terms of, number one, new investors. Maybe we'll pause and delay and to see how the situation sorts itself out. The fact that Thailand is a major economy in the region and their economic growth is slowing because of this situation, that also has some impact not only for Thailand but for those in the region. I think it's important to keep in mind. In Southeast Asia, this fast-growing region, if you exclude Japan and Australia from the U.S. point of view, this is the number one investment destination in all of Asia. And people don't realize uh, the population. I mean, we're talking <laughs> a huge population, much greater than that of the United States, Correct. living in this, uh, this region. Let me go to Indonesia mm -hmm. for just a moment. Mm -hmm. They, of course, have been growing very, very quickly. Sure. Is that another destination that when you think about ASEAN, you think about Southeast Asia, does that come on top as the number one choice because of the fast growth? I think the, the Indonesia ranks up very highly because, of course, the large size of the domestic market. So for those investors who are thinking about how do I tap into big population that's growing rapidly, Indonesia is a place you got to look at. Where Indonesia, though, sometimes suffers, though, the policy environment, the business environment there, not quite as competitive as, say, a Malaysia or a Singapore, smaller countries, but easier to do business in those markets. So Indonesia is still important. Kind of depends upon which type of investment opportunity you're really looking at. Very quickly, your top concern for the region. I think right now is the degree how they sort of work this situation in Thailand, how it works through, and to make sure that because Thailand is a major economy, it doesn't negatively affect the region's ongoing process at regional economic integration, the formation of the ASEAN Economic Community December 31st next year. I think that's the most important issue for the region of the situation in Thailand. That was Mark Mealy, Vice President of Policy at the U.S. ASEAN Business Council. Thank you.